hi folks this is an oxidana and this is my new playlist on java topics so in this playlist i'll be uploading videos on java topics whichever i think are interesting and there are a few resources available on youtube for the same and also with each topic i'll be uploading a medium post and the code of that topic i'll be uploading on github so that you can use both of these reference references while watching the video so yeah let's get started so the, f the first video is on flowable engine so first of all what is a flowable engine so flowable is a basically a business process engine written in java now what is a business process so in like the definition you can read out here but in simple language let's say you want to achieve some goal and there are n specific tasks that needs to be done in a specific order to achieve that goal so the collection collection of these tasks is a business process now here you'll see one more term bpmn what is bpmn so there are some standards and notation defined by omg object management group organization that while defining a process we should be following these notation so this we call bpmn business process model and notation yeah now come to this uh, tutorial now yeah in this tutorial we'll be making a simple uh, holiday approval handler application basically so in this so let's say an employee apply for a holiday a in this process a manager needs to approve the holiday and after approval of the holiday we need to do some things like making entries in our db and all and then it's course to final state and if it if, if the employee if the manager rejects the uh, holiday then also there are some steps which needs to be followed so flowable uses an xml file to store the definition of a business process which is based on bpmn standards so yeah let's see the xml file for this process yeah so this is the xml file we go step by step so this is the complete process so a process start by a process tag and this is the id of the process tag then after that there is a start event a process starts by a start event and ends by an end event one or like multiple end events then after that there is a sequence flow so what is a sequence flow so a sequence flow is basically this arrow so it's it's basically tells from which state to which state our process is going then after that there is a sequence flow called start event so this is the start of the event then it goes to a user task approved task so this task is uses whenever a use whenever an employee applies for the holiday application then after that after this user task so this sequence flow comes so the source is this approval task for it then this sequence task goes to this decision so this is the exclusive gateway with id decision so this exclusive gateway basically decides decide based on some condition that to which next task it should go so this is basically deciding we are deciding it based on the approved tag so this portion i'll commit later that how it's evaluating this now after this decision gateway it goes it can go to basically two uh, service tasks now one is uh, the external system call the second is the send rejection email so if the holiday is improved it will go to external system call if it will go to this service task the id of this is external system call and this service task triggers this handler and in this handler let's say we want to do some db entry and all we'll be doing it here then after this there's a sequence uh, flow uh, called holiday approved task so now after this service task we now again want to move to a user task in which user the employee who applied for the application needs to accept uh, that holiday that okay it's approved i'm also accepting this approved holiday so this is the user task which comes here and yeah so the target uh, reference for this was holiday approved task and this is the holiday approved user task now again come to this gateway if the holiday request was rejected now it comes to this the target reference for this is send rejection mail so if you'll see there is a service task with id send rejection mail it will come here and the service task will trigger this holiday rejection handler will do some db entry or sending an email blah blah stuff here now after that uh, there is one more sequence flow send rejection 
email so it comes to here send direction email and via this sequence flow it goes to reject 10 this is a reject 10 and after this user task uh, the approve and also comes that after the this user in which employee accept the holiday and it comes to this sequence flow and it goes to approve when so this is the definition now we'll make a simple application this application uh, again from scratch this i have already made for my reference that everything is working fine now we'll make everything from scratch and i'll use this already made application for reference so that it doesn't take much time so yeah let's get started so I'm using IntelliJ as an ID here. Now I'll start one new project. So in this new project is using Java 8. Now I'll go next and I'll name it, let's say, Flowable. Good. Okay. Now I'll finish. Now our project is uh, built and I also added a basic project structure, empty project structure so that it doesn't waste your time. So here I have just made a, like, a package structure here and this is the application empty application I have initialized. Now come to this form part. So as I already told I will be using the project already made for my reference. So this is the project. Now after that we will come to here. Now I will just copy paste the dependencies. and also this build plugin so this plugin is used to compile the java code using java 8 now come to this dependencies so this is a spring boot starter web dependency which is required it includes some four to five different charts which is required to like basic requirement for a spring boot app and after that this is the flowable, flowable spring boot starter so this is the char that includes some dependencies of flowable engine so that we can use this engine in our java app and after that this is the s2 database so these are the drivers for the in memory database we'll be using then after that this is the lombok so it uh, this plugin uh, basically in this dependency basically removes some redundant code getter setters uh, constructors and all we need not to write that and if the lombok plugin does, doesn't work for you you need to go to your IntelliJ and you need to uh, like enable annotation processing and also you need to install the Lombok plugin. Now come to this application part. So let's set up a basic Spring Boot application. I'll go to application already defined here and I'll just copy paste the main method. So it's just initialized the Spring Boot application. Now I'll also copy this annotation. So this annotation is required so that Spring Boot can load the application context and uh, the bean initializer can work. So for this, we need this Spring Boot application annotation. Yeah, so first step is have that BPMN uh, process definition file in our resources folder. So I'll go to the project and no file dot XML then i will go here and this is a already discussed definition now after this step we need to use flowable engine to have to use this process definition now for that so i'll tell you how flowable works so flowable by default creates some tables in the db we give uh, in the db we give and uh, in that table it stores the process definition and current state of the process which is being created so all this information it uh, stores in some default tables which is which gets created while booting up the application so now for this we need to deploy we need to tell flowable that this is the process definition you should be using so that first time it can store this process definition in its tables so that's why we need to make a separate API which can deploy basically we, uh, which can deploy this configuration to flowable. So yeah, let's make a controller controller here. We call it holiday controller which will be communicating with the holiday service. So again, I won't waste your time and I'll just 
copy paste the code from here and I will explain you in detail so this is the holiday controller already defined so I will just copy paste it here and so yeah so now what con this controller is doing so these are the basic annotation uh, to enable a controller in Spring Boot so this is a rest controller annotation then after that this is the field default so this con comes from Lombok so Lombok and this annotation tells us every variable declared inside this class should be private then after that all argument constructor it defines for this holiday controller and being initializer automatically at the runtime wrap this holiday service uh, like object to the holiday, holiday service uh, instance to this holiday service uh, variable okay now we need to have this method inside our holiday service so i'll go to the holiday service and i'll again copy paste this method so again this service annotation tells uh, spring boot that this is a service and it automatically uh, wire this object of this holiday service at runtime and after that this is again lombok plugin or argument constructor and the the auto wire annotation we have used which tells again the at runtime to bind this holiday service object okay then after that this is the deploy process definition method we are using here what it does is whenever we hit this api it comes here now this is the repository service so this is the class inside the flowable engine if you go here so what it does is in the table in the default table of flowable there are some tables i won't go to the much detail of the tables it creates and it goes it uses this repository service and create a new deployment and we need to tell that which process definition to use so that's why we are here giving the path of the, uh, the process definition we have declared here okay so this is the new deploy uh, uh, this method creates the new deployment so if we'll come here now i'll go here and i'll try to boot up the application so i'll go to spring boot uh, application so by default is it uses h2db to create the table in uh, default tables for well uses so i'll hit run here oh, just a second i need to give it the main class so it automatically picks it up now i'll run this application Now this application is running on port 8080. So port 8080 is the default port on which it runs. Now I'll try to create this deployment means entries in flowable table. So I'll use my Postman collection which I have already written. So I'll port 8080 is the host, localhost 8080 is the host, and then deploy is the endpoint. I'll create hit and it says 200 okay if i'll go here so the deployment is completed now the flow this our application understands this process definition and it can work uh, on this uh, process definition so before this before going ahead uh, now i told you that while like when the app boots up there are some default entries created in the DP. So how can we verify that? So I'll tell you here only that how can we connect to the S2DB and verify that the tables are there. I'll use the local profile here. So this is my habit to have local profile for the local development. So I'll make a new file called application.local.properties here. And I'll go here and I'll see 
oh application dot properties is here i'll use this now this configuration spring dot s2 dot console dot enable true means there's an endpoint on which it will conf automatically configure the s2 console where we can see all the information so i'll so i'll restart the application so our application has started just for your information i made a typo here uh, so just name it application has local dot properties so now i'll go to my browser and i'll type localhost 8080 slash has to console and we'll see that there's a there's a console open here so if you check the database url should be this if it's coming as something else you need to change it to this because by default the db name but test db is created in h2 so we'll check, check its connection it's working fine now we'll connect so if we'll connect we can see that these many tables are there in the test db so these are these all are the flowable tables we won't go in the much details of these tables so but still we know that now everything is working fine and for well is put up correctly now come to our project so as i can see this video is getting longer so i'll be covering the remaining part in the next video and in next video i'll be covering how an employee can apply for the holiday and how a manager can see all the holiday requests and can approve one of those requests and also we'll be covering the complete life cycle of a process in flowable so if you like the video please like the video and subscribe to my channel and yeah we'll see you in the next video bye bye